Thank you for attending our preoperative educational class before getting pituitary surgery. In this class, we will go over what to expect preoperatively and how to prepare your house, medications, and what to expect. We will also discuss making sure to have a support person at home to help you out and what recovery after brain surgery will look like. We will also briefly discuss frequently asked questions from patients just like you and who to contact and when to contact them. While you are inpatient here at Brigham and Women's Hospital, you will have a care team helping you out. You will have responding clinicians, such as fellows, residents, physician's assistants, which are different than your physician assistants outpatient, and nurse practitioners. You will also be assigned nursing staff. You will have registered nurses who typically work 12-hour shifts, but some do work 8-hour shifts. You will also have a patient care assistant who we like to refer to as a PCA. The PCA will help with your daily living activities, such as ordering breakfast, getting up and walking around, brushing your teeth, helping you get dressed, and then you may even have a nursing student. Depending on how you are feeling after surgery, if you are feeling weak, we may assign a physical therapist or occupational therapist to come and see you before going home, and a care coordinator who are our specialized nurses and resource specialists. They will be the ones that can help make sure that any kind of outpatient activities that need to be scheduled for you, such as if you need a physical therapist to come to your house, they will be the ones that organize all of that with you and will communicate with your insurance company. The Weiner Center is our preoperative surgical center that we'll be calling to go over any of your daily medications and schedule you to have any other lab or scans drawn and done before your scheduled surgery. Please have a list of your current medications that you take on a daily basis written down the time of day and the dosage that you take every day. You can bring this list of medications in with you to the hospital as well. Preparing your home prior to surgery is a great way to make sure that you are less stressed after leaving the hospital. Removing any tripping hazards such as throw rugs, clutter, or extension cords, things that can easily trip and fall, is a great way to make sure that you are as safe as possible. While going through your daily life, take an inventory of the things that you use that are below waist height. We do not want you bending over at the waist after having surgery. So if you notice that you have a decent amount of things that you use every day that you have to bend over to pick up, bring them up to waist height. Leave all your valuables at home. The less things that you bring into the hospital, the less chance you have to lose them. So extra jewelry or extra electronics, just leave them at home so you don't get them lost. Do important chores before surgery. Go to the supermarket. Make sure your fridge is stocked with all your favorite things, things that are high in protein, fruits and vegetables. Do your laundry ahead of time. Change your sheets ahead of time. If you know that you're a person that really needs to vacuum every week, make sure you vacuum the night before you come to surgery just so you aren't inclined to push yourself too much after you return home. If you are taking any blood thinners, such as Coumadin, Eliquis, Lovenox, Plavix, daily ibuprofen, daily naproxen, and aspirin, even if it's a baby aspirin, please reach out and let your surgeon know. They will discuss what is a safe plan of when to come off or if you will come off 
your blood thinners prior to surgery and when you will be allowed to restart them after surgery. It is very important after any type of brain surgery to not bear down to go to the bathroom. If you are feeling constipated after surgery, that is a very common feeling that people get. Buying over-the-counter bowel medications ahead of time will make it one less thing that you have to think about after returning home from surgery. Our go-to bowel medications are Senecot, which is a laxative, Colace, which is a stool softener, and Miralax, which is a powdered laxative that gets mixed in with any drink. You can see the pictures of them below on this slide for reference. It is now the night before surgery. You need to stop eating any time after midnight. Let's say your surgery is scheduled for a Wednesday. That means Tuesday night, midnight and on, you are done eating anything. However, you are allowed to drink clear liquids up until two hours before your scheduled surgery. For example, that would be water, black coffee, yellow Gatorade, or black tea. If you choose to have coffee or tea, you may not add sugar, cream, or milk to those drinks. Having someone at home to really be your cheerleader and to help you is so important after any type of surgery. They will be the ones to help cheer you on and really encourage you. Your support person can help you get your house ready. They can go grocery shopping for you or help clean up any items that you feel like you may have forgot to clean up prior to surgery. You are allowed one person to come to the preoperative area with you and you are allowed two visitors at a time after you are recovering from surgery on the step-down unit floor. Your support person can be the one that comes in to go over discharge teaching with us. It's always nice to have another set of ears to listen in on instructions. They can be your ride home from surgery. They also could be your healthcare proxy. So a healthcare proxy is that go-to person that if you were unable to make any medical decisions for yourself, they would be your go-to legal person to make those decisions for you. Your support person does not have to be your healthcare proxy, but they can be. Another great thing your support person can help you with would be picking up your medications after you've been discharged from the hospital. And again, they can just be that person to help encourage you to get up and go for some walks. Or if you need someone to reach out to the clinic to ask a few questions, they can be that person to help you. You are packing to come to the hospital, so what should you bring? I always remind our patients not to pack too much. The more things that you bring in with you, you could lose, and remember, you have to bring them home with you. So bring in a form of ID, like a license, and one form of payment. These two things come in handy if you have decided to fill your prescriptions here at our outpatient pharmacy. Now, that being said, we do encourage patients to fill their prescriptions at their own outpatient pharmacy because it's easier for refills if you need them. But if you feel like you live far away, you've had issues with your home pharmacy, for whatever reason, you can absolutely fill them at our outpatient pharmacy. If you wear glasses, make sure to bring them in with you. If you wear contacts, we want to make sure that they are not in your eyes when going into surgery. After surgery, it is up to your discretion if you would like to put in your contacts, um, but we do encourage people to really just try to lean on your glasses if you can. And then hearing aids. If you wear hearing aids, please remember to bring them in with you. 
that list of current medications that you went over with the Weiner Center, bring it in. People will be asking and reviewing your medications over and over just to make sure that everything is perfect for you. So just having that list of medications to hand off to a nurse or a PA is really helpful. When packing clothes, bring loose, comfortable clothing. I tell people it's easier to bring something that has a zip or buttons in the front so you don't have to pull things over your head after surgery. And make sure you bring comfortable pants, say, like sweatpants, and close back shoes like sneakers. So bringing whatever clothes are on your back and one other set of clothes to go home in is really all you will need to bring with you when it comes to clothing. Your surgery is completed and now you're recovering. We want you getting up and moving around as much as possible. Getting up and moving around helps encourage neurological recovery. Rest when you feel fatigued, but otherwise we want you up moving at least five to six times a day, going for short walks, five to 10 minutes, until you get some of your energy back and then you can slowly increase that. Eating a well-balanced diet is important to help your brain and incision heal. Protein, protein, protein. Meats, fish, eggs, cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, beans, peanut butter, all those things are really great options for protein. Vegetables and fruit are also important. You will be sent home on a one liter fluid restriction unless otherwise stated by your surgeon. It is extremely important to stay on that one liter fluid restriction until your follow-up appointment with your surgeon's clinic. You may shower and get your hair wet. If you do have an abdominal incision, please do not scrub it clean. Just let soap and water run right over it. Your preliminary pathology results should be back in 7 to 10 business days. Your surgeon's clinic will review those with you. We want you getting blood work the day before having your follow-up appointment with your surgeon's clinic. Please go first thing in the morning the day before your follow-up appointment on a completely empty stomach. Get your lab work done and then take your morning medications as normally scheduled as soon as your labs are completed. We want your labs to be drawn in the morning on an empty stomach the day before your follow-up appointment so your surgeon's clinic may review them with you. If you use a CPAP machine, which is that breathing machine, if you have obstructive sleep apnea, you are not allowed to use your CPAP machine until your follow-up with your ENT. It is the day that you were allowed to go home. Your surgeon is always the one to make the determination when they are ready for you to go home from the hospital. Please have your support person or your ride come to the hospital the morning of your discharge. We plan to have patients discharged by 12 p.m. on the day that you were approved to leave. Your visitor which is your ride home, may come up before visiting hours. We will approve it for them to come to bedside and listen to your discharge teaching with you. After all of your discharge teaching is reviewed, including any new medications and all of our post-op care, you will be taken down to the main lobby in a wheelchair. All of your medications will be sent over to your home pharmacy unless you tell us otherwise. Like previously stated, you will most likely be put on a fluid restriction after surgery. Most patients will go home on a one liter fluid restriction. This fluid restriction is important to maintain your sodium levels after surgery. Fluid includes, but is not limited to, any type of liquid that you drink, including coffee or tea, water, 
popsicles, soups, even watermelon. If your mouth is feeling very dry after surgery, which is common, you can chew gum or suck on a hard candy to alleviate any of that dryness without having to use up any of your fluid restriction. After any kind of pituitary surgery, because we will be going into your brain up through your nose, we want you going home on sinus precautions. That means if you have to sneeze, please open your mouth to sneeze. Don't keep it closed. Do not introduce any foreign objects in your nose. That also includes your fingers. Do not blow your nose. Do not pick any packing out of your nose. Do not use your CPAP machine after surgery until your ENT follow-up appointment. Do not use any straws when drinking fluid. Do not bend over to pick anything up. Remember, we want to keep our head above our shoulders at all times. And then please do not lift anything heavier than 10 pounds, which is a gallon of milk, until your follow-up with your surgeon's clinic. Things to expect while you're recovering in the hospital right after surgery. Like we said before, we want you up, moving, and grooving after surgery. That is how you get better faster. Please expect your blood to be drawn every six hours and your urine to be collected around the exact same time. This is giving us a better look at how your levels are leveling out after surgery. Your intake and output will be monitored by your nurses. That means anything that you drink needs to be measured and anything that you pee out also needs to be measured. Please let your nurses know when you have finished a cup of, say, water or you have gone to the bathroom and measured your urine. You will see a neurosurgery team round on you every morning around 6 a.m., they are there just to discuss the plan for the day. Your nose will most likely be leaking some red fluid right out of surgery. That is to be expected. As the days go on, that red fluid should be getting lesser and lesser. Most patients, by the time that you leave the hospital, are barely having any output from their nose. You will be started on some nose sprays after surgery. You will be started on a spray called saline spray. You're going to use it as often as you want. I usually tell people every couple of hours, really keep your nose nice and moist. It will also help dissolve the packing that is put up there from ENT. And you will also be put on Afrin Afrin is used as a decongestion. We can only use it for three days. Anything after three days, we want to stop using Afrin. Here are some frequently asked questions I have gotten from patients in the past. How often will I be getting my blood drawn while I'm inpatient? Well, like we said before, Please expect them to be in your room every six hours. That is typically at 6 a.m., 12 p.m., 6 p.m., 12 a.m. That varies. Sometimes that morning hour is a little bit earlier, so your doctors can review things earlier just to see how your lab look. When I get my blood drawn after being sent home, you will get your blood drawn after being sent home the day before your follow-up appointment with clinic. So if you're being discharged, say, on a Friday, your follow-up will most likely be on a Wednesday. You should be expected to get your labs drawn at any outpatient laboratory Tuesday morning on an empty stomach. What are visiting rules and hours? And can my support person stay over? Visiting hours can change. They have stayed pretty steady lately, so please follow the link below to check updated hours. As of right now, there are 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. You are allowed two visitors at a time at bedside, 
and people can rotate throughout the day. You cannot have any support person stay over with you at bedside. They need to be leaving by 8 p.m. every night. If you have extreme extenuating circumstances, please reach out to your surgeon's clinic about seeing if you are able to get approval by the hospital to allow somebody to stay overnight. When you are at home, if you have problems after surgery, we always want you calling your surgeon's clinic first. But what happens if it is a weekend, a holiday, or it's off business hours? We have an emergency phone number listed right here on the right side of this chart. This goes to our neurosurgeons that are within the hospital at all hours of the day. This number is to be used only for emergency purposes. So what considers an emergency after the surgery? Overall, we want you feeling better, not worse, once you go home. If you are having any changes in your vision, your speech, your walker, walking or swallowing, I want you reaching out to letting your surgeon know. If you are having worsening pain or increased headaches, especially that are getting worse when you lie down and then sit up, I want you calling to let your surgeon's clinic know. If you are having nausea, so bad that you cannot eat anything all day, or if you start vomiting at all, please call and let your surgeon know. If you are having an increase of drainage from your nose, whether it be red, pink, yellow, or clear, it should be slowing down, not picking up. I want your surgeon to know. A true fever is anything over 100.5. This does not mean you need to take your temperature every day. If you wake up, say, and have the shaking chills and you feel feverish, you take your temperature and we'll say it's 101.2. I want you calling and letting your surgeon know so they understand what's going on. If you were to have any emergency at all, please do not hesitate to call 911 and go to the hospital closest to you. Last but not least, Patient Gateway is a great place to communicate with your surgeon's clinic for non-emergent issues. It's also a great place to keep track of your labs, to print out any medical information you want to give to your primary care if they're not within our Mass General Brigham umbrella. Patient Gateway can be used to reach out for appointments. It can be used to organize appointments, ask questions, set appointment reminders. You can get accurate information about your health concerns on there. There's some great tools on Patient Gateway to help you learn a little bit more about your medical diagnosis. Please make sure you are signed up for Patient Gateway before coming into the hospital. If you are having any other questions or concerns prior to your surgery, please contact your surgeon's clinic. We also have noted here a generalized neurosurgery number that if you are having a hard time getting into contact with your clinic, you can feel free to reach out to this number here. Thank you so much for choosing Brigham and Women's Hospital for your surgery, and we look forward to a fast and healthy recovery.